good to see you all. This is me once again, uh, Sternby, aka A Carbon. And now I am joined, thankfully for the first time in a little while, uh, a, a, a notification is joining me. Thank you, Steve, <laughs> for your notification. I appreciate that so much. Uh, how are you doing, notification? Good, good to hear from you. Again. Um, it is, I, I forgot what I was going to t say about it. It's Susan Stewart, everyone. Hey. Hello. Hey. And hi, Drapex. Hello, Drapex. Good to see you again. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah. So, finally, back to Real Mist. It has been a minute. So, I am eager to get back into this. How are you feeling about this? Well, I am so excited, even though I was just yawning. I'm very excited. <laughs> I caught you mid yawn. Huh? You did. <laughs> uh, oh, it does not help that I decided to drink some tea for this. Oh. But uh, yeah. here we are. All right. Well, let me. Uh, let me. I don't have much left of my uh, whiskey, and this is the last of the alcohol I have in the house because I need to take, take my. Uh, Diet a little bit more seriously, so I'm pouring myself. Probably was going to be the last of this. And the last well, time we, cheers. I do any drinking um, on stream. Also, it would help if I started recording. So that's, that would doing, also help. Yes. Doing that now, I can I can recover the uh, earlier bits from choice. So do. Okay, so um, there so. we go. We are here now in the mechanical age. We just got here at the end of the last episode. Um, we read about this, how there were apparently like three tall peaks. Is that, does that sound right? But then the rising waters uh, caused them to be little more than islands. Uh, so it basically sank the Ooh, city or whatever. Yes, this is the place with the rotation. Right. And there was like a rogue, uh, not rogue, but uh, an enemy with a black flag or something like that. Mm -hmm. so they, and they were coming Kept back invading to finish jerks. the job. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, here we are. This is where we came from, and there's no book to go back, so we're going to have to find the book just like we did in the last age. To get back to Mist Island. I like the metallic sheen on those gears. That's nice. Um, and then there's this uh, device here. With symbols on it. It's obviously not uh, useful at the moment until we know what we're dealing with. Platform railing. But let's go ahead and get into the meat of it, which is this right here. This big, we <laughs> very oddly constructed thing. Clearly, someone had too much fun in a, a 3D uh, program. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow, so much detail on it. I wish I could switch back to the old on the fly and see what it looked like then, compared to this. But, you know. Right, like we do a secret of Monkey of yeah. Isle. Yeah. 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 But we can walk in. Let's explore this thing. Very narrow hallways. So here's a little room. Very small room. Some paintings, what appears to be a throne. Of that reminds me of the thing that's on the floor in the uh, stone ship. What does? This gong or whatever it is. Oh, this on the back of the throne here? Yeah, yeah, it reminds me of the symbol in the stone ship age floor that we used. Oh, that uh, compass rose? Yeah, that, that compass had... rose. Let's see. Whoop. Oh, well, I can sit in here on the throne. Nice. Oh, there's a telescope. Yeah, let's stand up again. Um, got some models here. Lots of paintings. <laughs> Dice <objects>. collection. <laughs> let's look at the telescope. Oh, nothing. Okay. Oh. 
Oh, you all right? <laughs> yes, yes I am. I accidentally dropped my microphone. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Wasn't all that noisy or anything here. So Good. It landed on something soft, so I think that helped. <laughs> yeah, it must have helped. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's see. There's a looks like a little miniature version of the clock tower that we saw on this island. Um, looks like an exact modicle, mo model, not modicle. I don't know what a modicle is, but it certainly isn't that. Actually, it's a gold version model of the, of the uh, ship? ship from Stone Ship Age. Yeah. Um, tell me Except something, Red Pax. Is your ship... In what? Except intact, not... Intact, yeah. That's <laughs> true. In half. Well, You're and the rock. ship on Mist yeah. Island was intact, too. The one we used to get to Stone Ship. That is true. Um, here's that rocket ship. Here's a... a mechanical, wooden, maybe, bird... And we can wind it up and do that with it. I have no idea why, but okay. Are you there? Susan? Yes. Yes, okay. I'm here. Sorry. Didn't know if maybe you fell asleep. I guess the longer you wind it up, the, the more it animates and does that. <laughs> okay. Well, the, Wonder if these are famous paintings in any way. I don't recognize them. I probably should. I don't know. I don't, I don't recognize them either. Look at the other one again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm also not not big on my art history, so um, I'm not the best well, person for this. Let's also look over here at these. These just kind of light up when you click on them for a little while. Okay. All right, whatever. Uh, that happened in the original Mist too. There's absolutely zero explanation for it. It just happens. There's our little chessboard down here. Not a full chessboard. It's only a six by six, not eight by yeah. eight. So I don't know what's going on there, but. All right, well, um, okay, so here's one room. Uh, I guess we'll check this out while we're here. There's this, uh, looks like a little indentation in the wall, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, and we got a clicky mouse cursor. Mm-hmm. We can actually go in there, kind of have to crawl through, it looks like. Well, hi, Wine. Uh -huh. And you know, just money on the ground. That's how you keep money, money. definitely. Wow, Gold bars, it's fine. Yeah. Casually scattered There's around. Lots the room. of chests of gold here. And a piece of paper in here. Oh. Uh, I'll read this one here. Uh, Cirrus, you're this is ri written in a very um, unsteady hand, to uh, put mm. it mildly. Cirrus, your greed sickens me. Your desire for wealth and plunder is never satisfied. I will instruct my subjects not to pay your new tax, and you know they'll listen to me. Regards, Agonar. Well. And what do we have here? Next to these uh, Is bars. that a red page? That's a red page. That's a red page. All right. That's our yeah. red page now. Okay. Well, that's one room. Let's continue looking around this. Uh, it's a red button. It's a red button, indeed. And there's also this pathway before we hit the red button. Let's look in, in here. Um, kind of dark. The circular room is probably in the middle of this fortress. Doorway that's closed off. Let's back back up again here. Um, hit 
red button. And that happens. Walk down here, there's some controls, a bunch of spotlight looking towards the middle. Ah! Computer decided to hiccup there. Yeah, get back out. Wow. Almost stuck. got stuck there. Um some controls. And a display next to it. I guess we want to align those. Well, it turned red for a moment there. Let's see if we can do that again. Oh, I guess I'm holding it just a little bit too long. There we go. Alright, well, let's go back up the stairs. Turn around, and look at that. The door is open, so... Nice. Nice. We can walk on in here. Oh, automatically turn around in it. Um, oh, we can do that. So it's an elevator. It's the middle button. Uh, sounds like it's going to blow up. Door didn't open. No? Oh, it didn't go down all the way, so it yeah, only maybe down halfway. Maybe it puts you in between? Put us between the floors. Alright, well, what's on this floor? Yeah, there's something around the back here. A bunch of gears. Gears, nice. Okay, gosh, it's so dark in here. Yes, we do have a flashlight. As a reminder. Yeah, I do keep forgetting. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, alright. Well, that sounds like an indication to me, doesn't it? Uh, if we mm -hmm. hit this and have time to get out, if it goes down between the floors, why would that help us? Just trap us here. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, uh, okay. <laughs> More red buttons. I love this age. You like red buttons. I do. Like oh, well. pushing. Oh, okay. okay, the red button brings us back. Okay. okay. Good to know, so right. we're not trapped all here right. at least. All right. all right, that's good. Um Well, let's do that again. Uh, as it turns out this is a very important thing that's gonna to be able to solve this age, obviously. Um, all right. Well, that doesn't seem to do anything. This one. Well, it's turning the gears a little bit. I don't know how much. Should I just hold it down? Let's see what happens. I mean, and what? Oh, that was an interesting sound, huh? Yeah, it's like a rewind sound. Or... Oh. Yeah, redo it. All right, let's. Can't make it. So this is like. It's not really clear here. It's, it's kind of more clear actually in the original Mist game that this unlocks the gears so you can turn right. with this. Right, that was now. my memory of it. Yeah, you could see it in the other one. The moment you push this knob up, uh, you could see the gears kind of loosen up a little bit and kind of mm -hmm. rotate slightly. Yeah, uh, kind of engage. It's not happening here, so it's not really as clear. Here's a cowbell. Yeah. More like, cowbell. So let's leave it at cowbell. All right. <laughs> let's see. We need to actually uh, gather more information. 
before we can make an accurate uh, understanding of what's going on with that in the sounds. Alright, let's go through here. Let's finish our exploration of this fortress. And let's go to the next room. Well, this one certainly is not, not nearly as ostentatious as the other one. Covered up his window with a curtain, looks like. He's got uh, some swords on the wall and a mask. Poles laying around some wood. Chains, kind of uh, weapons of war here. Some maces, crossbow. Box. It's turning on its own. So that happened. Um, yeah. Little jack in the box with a snake prop in it. And looks like a whole lot of weapons around here. So not a whole lot, but more anyway. Another mason another axe. Headsman's axe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, that's enough weapons that you're, like, just casually leaving them around. Like, it, more than your weapons rack was really made for. Yeah. Weird animal hide up here. What is and, that yellow striped thing by the axe? What is that? We'll get that in a second. Uh, this throne, oh, we can sit in this throne, too. Okay. I just wanted to mention that. Oh, some horns on the wall. I wonder what kind of steed, steed would have those horns. Um, uh, so, horns yeah, we've got a device here that looks hmm, actually that similar. That looks familiar. It says oh. Fortress Rotation Simulator. Calibrating. Okay, so this is some good information. This is how you, you, you train yourself on what we just played with <laughs> you hit this and now they're unlocked again it's not really clear only that if you try to move this it doesn't do anything until you turn this off which is at Calbo right now so if you let go and you lock it it'll lock into a place on one of these four cardinal directions now I get a little steam hiss I guess that's what that is Uh, I have no idea what this bar on the corner represents whatsoever. It just keeps going up and down and up and down. I guess it's how close you are to one of the cardinal directions, maybe. <laughs> oh, there's a, what do you call that, a bell or a ding or something? Oh, I think I may have lost you again, Susan. No, sorry. I have myself muted because I was sneezing. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I would call that a plink, personally. A plink. All right. A plink. plink it is. So we got a hiss and a plink. And a cowbell for the southern. So, mm -hmm. And whatever that is. I, you know, I have a memory when I wrote these down in my pen and paper notes back in the day when I'm playing mm -hmm. this. Uh, I just called that upscale because it sounded like going up on a scale on the keyboard or something, just mm -hmm. from yeah. low to high. That sounds good. I'm sure there's probably a better term out there. Feel free. Hey, Dre Pax, uh, thank you for letting me know you're still here. I'd call it a schwit. Schwing? Schwit. Oh, schwip? Whip. Okay. That's the new official name for that sound. Okay, that's a cowbell, though, there. All right, so this thing with the yellow. Oh, look at this. We can click it, and we can crawl into oh, this space, too. Oh, oh, yeah. oh! Yeah. Oh. Oh. Meeklier-ish. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um... 
and a cage right here with no no visible keyhole on the lock. I don't know how you're supposed to open it. I mean, there's a lever. Is there? No, yeah, isn't that what this thing is on the left? Oh, well, let's see. Oh, no, that's just to electrocute people. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, you know. Okay. Uh, I got a whole bunch of tonics or something over here. And, yes, that is a blue page down there. Dagger. Mortar and pestle. Another mortar and pestle. Separated. And a box that we can slide open and... Whoop, hey, I didn't tell you to do that. And we see a, another mask inside. I don't know why. The game decides that we want to focus the camera on that in that particular way, but here we are. And the original Mist did the same thing, too. So, okay. Um, assuming uh, we're making some assumptions here. That the other room was Cirrus's room, since we saw that letter addressed to him there, talking about his, from Akinar, that was talking about his uh, need for greed. This one must be Akinar's room. I love how he's throwing those stones. Like, yeah, your brother's a greedy bastard, but you like to torture people, so which is yeah. worse? <laughs> Okay, so we're still no little close, closer to a, a mist book that can get us out of here. So let's do this fortress rotation. That's our only clue. We haven't really followed up on much. We we're at Cowbell, which was like south, right? Oh, we don't need to go down there anymore. Yeah. So let's rotate it to whatever the next one was, which I think was a uh, hiss, steam hiss. Hiss, hiss would be east, yeah. So let's do that since it see, seems to only rotate in a counterclockwise direction. Oops, I forgot to hit the middle button so that we can access those controls. Odd place to put the controls on the top, top of an elevator. I would think there's a more convenient location for them, wouldn't you? I mean, if you don't want people fucking around with them, it's a pretty good place. Because how many people are like, you know, I bet they hid those on the top of an elevator. <laughs> okay, right, let's try that. Okay, good. That was enough. Here's your steam. Hits. Okay, let's get out. Of here. I guess the idea is since you don't have any visual indicator as to as to how far the fortress is rotating, you're supposed to kind of get an idea for how long you're supposed to hold down that uh, control by using the simulator. <laughs> Maybe time it, count it in seconds or something. I don't know. But... All right. Well, let's see. The steam hiss is east, so if we look out here, sure enough, yep, we're seeing a different location, which should be just to the right, yep, of that one. Well, to the right from the other. Anyway, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> and let's walk around, walk around. Only one way to go here. Next to this interesting looking pedestal. Well, that looks like half of the code that we need. Oh. Uh, you so want to got like a sun over mountains and a half moon. Okay, you want to write this down, screenshot, or memorize it? Uh, let's see. I got a pen right here. Oops. Oops. And a piece of paper. Okay. Sorry, I. Uh, was clicking to a different uh, screen. Okay, there we go. Um, done. Done. All right. 
wonder, you know, actually I haven't even tried to see if we can walk around. Because you can't in the original game, obviously. I wonder if this one we can walk around on that little beach rocky area right here. No, the game still won't let us. Okay. I wonder if there's some sort of secret Easter egg hidden there. Kind of like that Tiana headstone that we saw yeah, yeah. on this island. Uh, Draypax, let, let me know whether or not it, uh, the video feed uh, looks janky to you. If it's um, stuttering a bit, or if the audio sounds odd in any way. It looks like it's supposed to be going through fine, but it looks janky to me. I think the new Windows update messed it up. Ah, see, once again, I forgot to hit this button first. Here to get out of here. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> hopeless. <sighs> I'm here's to being hopeless. Mm. <sighs> mm. Mm. That works. All right, so now we're gonna listen for what sound? That one the right plank, there. The plank, yes. The plank. That should be north. Assuming that Fortress Simulator uses standard cardinal directions. Anyway. It's a little choppy, but sounds good. Yeah, see, that's what I'm seeing, too. Hopefully the recording that I'm making uh, at the same time right now is not uh, bad. I guess we'll see. You also have to walk all the way around the fortress to get to those controls, which I guess, again, yeah. security reasons, that makes sense. Like, the is really a fortress. <clears throat> exactly. Oh, that's a little stupid. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at this. There's a lovely... Uh, another pedestal. Oh, can we walk around here? Oh, come on. I could easily step off of here and we'll walk around. Game doesn't want us to. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, look at that. Can, do you see what I'm seeing out there in the corner? Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. You see, you see it better when it's to mm -hmm. the left or right rather than center, and that's because of the way that draw boxes are done in games. But anyway, yeah. Huh. All right. Well, uh, on this pedestal, it looks like the other half of the code that we need. What do you think? I've drawn it. I'm ready. Awesome. I wonder if there's weather effects here, too, or day night or anything. I doubt it. I think they only, he did that for the for this island. That's fair. Because you're theoretically Absolutely. not supposed to spend a ton of time in each age. Right. Okay. Also, before we go to the controls again, let's look through the telescope now that we've rotated this. Okay, it still shows nothing. Uh, I forgot to look through the telescope at the steam hiss. Yes. Let me do that real quick, because there is actually a little, I wouldn't call it an Easter egg, but there's a little something something. You, you remember what I'm talking about? I don't, actually. Uh-oh. Uh. Almost left again, see? <laughs> <laughs> Caught myself this time. <clears throat> so we're gonna have to hold this down until we get to the steam hiss. So we can just so we can check that out. Uh, let's see what this is. That's the cowbell, so a little bit mm -hmm. further. There we go. Didn't hear it through the first. And let's go back down. And let's go back.
back over here to Sirius's room. And we look inside. Okay, nothing still. That's fine. Now we go over to... What did you call that one? What? Call... Huh? Oh, the Schwip. Schwip. Okay, Schwip. Schwip next here. There we go. <laughs> yeah. I got a bad one. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was. Schwip. And uh, we'll we'll go outside first before we uh, check the telescope this time. Sounds good. Just cause. Oh well, okay. There is, there was, no, there's no island here, so I guess those three islands are. Let's see, oh, there's that ship again. Um, are like the big one there that we started on, and those other two. See, when I read the book the first time, I imagined it was talking about how there was, a, was it a town or village or something? That was surrounded mm -hmm. by three mountains. Yeah. And as the water le le levels rose, um, or rattle water level, yeah, rose, um, all that was left of those mountains were just three islands or something. Well, mm -hmm. if you look at the actual distance between these islands, there is not enough room between them to constitute a town or even a village. Right. I've always, like, I imagine this being, like, much substantially larger. Substantially larger. Yes. That's <laughs> always confused me. I was like, and I get it. Maybe at the time they need, they had constraints they couldn't make a huge uh, sort of open world <laughs> thing or, right. or a huge fortress or whatever. I get that, maybe, but and they didn't want to make the player walk long distances or whatever I don't know in any case it just seems a little weird to me and <clears throat> telescope here shows look at <laughs> it. it's Bob says the achievement that I just unlocked hi Bob <laughs> okay yeah and that was in the original game too and you can see the black flag in that uh, shot as well indicating one of, that that was one of the uh, ships that they downed evil ships hey look at me I remember to hit that button before leaving the elevator <gasps> God. it's okay you can be in awe I'll allow it <laughs> All right, so let's go back to the cowbell, the home position, so to speak. Fuck. <laughs> now that we have a completed code in Hell hand, yeah. go back to Mist Island and deliver this red page that is getting quite wet because we're holding in our sweaty hand, hands this whole time. At least it hasn't been getting rained on like certain other ages. True. Very true. We're smudging it with our fingers, though, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. That's a thing or not, but okay. I mean, depends on the ink, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> How old or fresh it is. And the paper. And what it's made of. Seven. and Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, what do we got here? The okay, symbol? the first one uh, is like a headset or an upside down horseshoe. Whatever way you want to look at it. That one. 
Like that? Yep. I can see headset maybe, but ho I thought horseshoes were always like like that, not upside down. I thought upside no, down. No, you was... want them to be the opening to be up, otherwise all of the luck falls out. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I've never heard that before. Um, You've not heard that before. It's a major thing. No, I never, and I trust you because you are the person to talk to you about anything horse related whatsoever. It's just I I never heard that before. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> luck falls out. Well, if you're walking under it at the time, wouldn't you want that luck to fall onto you? I mean, yeah, but. Like, if it's been upside down for a while, it empty. Uh, okay, that's true. This bitch empty. <laughs> Eats. What's the second symbol? <laughs> uh, it is a uh, downward pointing triangle, a thick bar, and then an upward facing triangle. So three, th not that. That. Okay, that, all right. And then we've um, got the three upward facing triangles with the circle over it. That looks like. Oh, yeah, the one you call like the mountains with the sun or something. Yep. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. like that. And then we've got the half circle. That. Oh, that right there. Okay. Hey! What, why did it suddenly. That was weird. Okay. Uh, yeah. There we are. Mechanical age. Let's go home. Well, something was silent anyway. All right. I finished all Miyaki Hall. Going back to standard old soft drink. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, let's put the red page into the blue book and see what happens. What happens? Don't get mad. Oh, it just won't. It'll just repeat the same thing we saw before. Okay. Ah. It just won't do that. Fine. There we go. There's the sound effect that tells us we did the right thing there with the page. Have returned. Additional page. since he's the one that's obsessed with riches. Would well, you? there is that. Hello, Carly Toss. Thank you for joining. It's going pretty decently. How about you? Welcome to the stream. Woo! <laughs> All right, let's go back and, I guess, uh, get a blue page. Get that blue page. Heck yeah. 
and uh, see what his brother has to say. So it sounds like they are imprisoned, which yeah, yeah that tracks. Okay, um, and it may be by restoring these pages um, after so many of them that they will eventually be released from their prison. So you pr probably uh, are old enough to ha have played this in your childhood. Uh, you probably just uh, missed it at, at the time, apparently. Um, <laughs> missed, missed it. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Sorry. Oh, oh, maybe. Right, right. <laughs> maybe. This I'm is going to be a short happy. visit because. At this point in my day, we oh. know exactly where the uh, blue page is, and we don't have to do any. <laughs> fuss with any tower rotations we don't have to solve yeah. our puzzle we just grab it and we just go. grab it and cheese it <laughs> you're the only other person who I've known who has used the phrase cheese it uh, <laughs> really? to describe I guess running or whatever <laughs> yeah GTFOing Basically, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Carly. If you ever, ever do get the hankering to play the original, which you can find just about anywhere now in the, these days, um, you're going to be a little bit disappointed, especially compared to like this real missed masterpiece edition. The graphics are just, uh, so. I mean, if you don't mind the nostalgia factor, by all means. But uh, yeah, this would be the one to play. If you're playing, you know. I wish they had kept. The original footage of these uh, of the brothers trapped in the books, because clearly they're still using the exact same video files that they used in the original game. It's so low resolution and compressed looking. I kind of but... like that though for the effect they're going for. Anyway. Uh, maybe. I mean, I, I guess it, you could make an argument that it, it only helps it rather than harms it. In yeah. That, in that sense. Um, or it, but if that were the case, then maybe it would become sharper and clearer the more pages you put into the book, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just a thought. Um, but yeah, I think, or for all I know, I don't know the whole story yet because I haven't watched the documentary that is. Yeah, just recently, uh, recently got funded, but uh, maybe they just recorded the original footage direct to like VHS tape or something, so they don't have any high resolution uh, originals to go. To. It is a puzzle, yes, Carly. Um, uh, it is multiple puzzles put together, of course, but there is. A a story um, running throughout all of these puzzles that you are <laughs> slowly unraveling as you explore and solve the various puzzles in the game. Uh, so basically your overarching uh, objective as you start the game is to collect red and or blue pages to put in these books. Uh, to get more information out of the people that are in the books. However, with the caveat that one of them is apparently responsible for a lot of uh, fuckery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, their <laughs> father discovered that it was one of the, them that uh, burned all the books in his library here, which are very important. Probably even links to other ages. I don't know. It's, I, that was, I, don't think it's, I always felt like was the implication. Yeah, it was never explained, I don't think. But uh, let's go <laughs> ahead and see what Akinar has to say with this uh, latest uh, p uh, page reinserted into his prison book. Ah, good. <laughs> <laughs> that always gets me. More. I must have some more. That's all I ask of you. Long. It's 
So long since my brother wrongfully imprisoned me within this book. Stupid schemes. Pretty speech. Greed, which is endless. It should be perfectly obvious to you. He's done evil and he has destroyed all before. Do not bring the red pages to him. Not let him trick you. He tricked our father. Hideously murdered our father. He'll trick you. He'll murder you. Don't touch the red pages. I beg you to bring the blue pages. Listen, you must obey me. You pages are my only hope. You must help me. You must help me. He sounds a little bit off his rocker there, but that, he, has, uh, he has uh, always been coming out across as very unhinged thus mm -hmm. far. And that tracks. He is accusing, accusing his brother Cirrus of, of having murdered their father, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Well, that is uh, Mechanical Age done. Woo! Let us two check ages out. down. Yes, two down. And I won't say how many more to go because I don't know if that's a spoiler or not. Uh, but, I mean, he did say, one of them did say there were two more pages to oh, burn. Oh, did he? Okay, I, I, I totally glossed over that. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, two down, two to go. Uh, although, actually, because this is real mist, there is a fifth age. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> uh, which, after the game proper, you will we'll be able to explore that. Anyway, um, okay, so I guess let's uh, go to the tower rotation. Uh, but yeah, Carly, um, <clears throat> it's an interesting game in that you're dropped into the middle of, or not middle, but the beginning of it without any real instructions or explanation. You just discover the, the story as you go along. In fact, when I first played this game back in 93 or 94, um, I did not know what the heck was going on. I figured it was just a puzzle game like you. Uh, until I started playing it, solving the puzzles putting these red, red, blue pages back into the books and discovering, oh, there's actually a story going on here. There's more to it than just solving puzzles. And I thought that was fascinating. And that's what really started my, I uh, wouldn't call it an obsession, but uh, deep interest <laughs> in the Myst series. Uh, yeah, this is basically the original game itself, just remastered and updated with a new graphics engine, gameplay engine, etc. Um, just about everything has been cleaned up and redone for uh, today's uh, computers and, ex and player expectations, <laughs> uh, more or less. Uh, actually, before we do the tower rotation, I just remembered we have a book to read um, in order to introduce us to the next age that we'll be visiting. Uh, that's, that's not the book, actually. Uh, it would be this one, if, if you can read the spine there, this is the Channelwood Age of Mist. So this will be the next one we visit. Uh, I'll read this one, you can read the next one if you want, uh, Susan. Alrighty, sounds like a deal. <coughs> Excuse me. I have called this age Channelwood, and it is a very different world. Though it is exactly how I imagined it, it is still amazing to see it with my own eyes. Water cover this age as far as I can see, except for a small rocky island. Elsewhere, there are only trees which go directly out of the water. A myriad of thin wooden passageways are built just above the water and disappear into the forest. I assume they were built some time ago, for they appear aged. I am eager to discover more about this land and its people, but I have arrived here late and I must rest. Why would you go to a rage and age and immediately fall asleep? 
I mean, that seems a little... Anyway. I mean, that's generally what you do when you travel. You go somewhere and go to bed. <laughs> My opinion. <laughs> it's usually in a hotel or a motel or something. I don't know. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, you go to the hotel and you're like, all right. You don't have sad. one of those here. <laughs> Um, I was awakened this morning by strange noises coming from a pathway adjacent to the one on which I had slept. I saw a group of monkey-like people heading in my direction. They had not seen me yet. I did not feel threatened by their presence. Their response to me was one that I would have never expected. After staring at me for a short time, they fell to their knees and began what appeared to be some sort of ceremonial worship. I tried to speak to them, but they did not understand my language. Instead, they indicated through enthusiastic hand motions that I was to follow them. As we walked, I began to notice that the waters below us were changing colors. Slowly, subtly, they would change from deep blue to muddy orange. Then from muddy orange to beautifully clear. I was so intrigued by the water, I hardly noticed that we had arrived at a ladder. Climbing the ladder led us to their village, which is about 10 meters above the water and can only be reached by rope ladders that stretch from the lower paths to the village level approximately halfway up the Grand Trees. It was very interesting watching these people carry out their daily tasks. Even after watching them for hours, I did not understand exactly what they were doing. At sunset, they motioned for me to follow them. I followed the creatures to the doorway of an enormous hut. Strangely, once inside, I found that the hut appeared even larger than it had from the outside. Ooh, got some Time Lords going on here. Uh, <clears throat> the walls were garnished with bright metals, and in the center of the hut sat the leader of these people. His name was Tom Baker. No. Uh, at <laughs> least he appeared to be their leader, for he sat a meter off the floor in a thick throne. Guards surrounding the strong creature who was surrounded the strong creature who was dressed in many exotic colorful fabrics next to the leader sat a very old human at least to some extent he appears human his hair which was only on his face and head was completely gray almost white and hung very long around his frail body his thin head hung limply by an almost grotesque neck that could not hold its head up to look at me but what a surprise this creature could speak my language Shortly thereafter, I was given a bed with some hand motions that looked to be telling me to go to sleep. I look forward to learning more. <clears throat> As I suspected, the ancient creature is a human, but he is old beyond his own reckoning and seems almost insane. However, the tree dwellers almost revere him as a god. They are treating me now in the same fashion, which makes me feel very uncomfortable. It is almost impossible to understand this old man. His voice is feeble, but wild. He has adopted much of the language of the tree dwellers. He himself told me he had not spoken our, la our own tongue in ages. He attempted to explain to me the history of this place. The following is my best translation of what he has told me. <clears throat> Many years ago... The humans and tree dwellers lived together in this place, which was then a vast island. They interacted very little. The humans dwelt on the ground, and the tree, tree dwellers lived high above the humans. Occasionally, the island was disturbed by mysterious rumblings, which happened randomly. Some sort of tectonic or volcanic, uh, volcanic action, I suspect. The sometimes slight, sometimes heavy tremors would only last a short time. Then they would stop, allowing everything to return to normal. One day, things changed. The rumbling began and grew quickly to unprecedented levels. Soon it became apparent that the entire island was sinking slowly into the ocean around them. Boy, this is a common occurrence with his ages, isn't it? Many of the humans died that day, but not before sacrificing themselves in order to stop the sinking of the island. How? The humans who lived through this catastrophe moved into the trees where they gradually died out, maybe because they were unequipped for such an environment, but I am not sure. This is the story the old man communicated to me, although many details are very unclear in my mind. Yeah, exactly. I am especially confused as to how the humans saved the island from completely sinking. In fact, I doubt the accuracy of that part of the story. The island must have stopped on its own. Yet, the old man believes in the truth of the story as if he had been there. And the tree dwellers worship him, and apparently all humans, as if he... Or 
they were heroes or gods. The old man ended our conversation today with an event which I will never forget. He began gripping my hands tightly, murmuring something about rest and the sleep. He then said, we had expected you to come sooner. These actions filled me with a sort of immediate dread. With much effort, he stood to his feet. I tried to help him, but he pushed me away with more force than I imagined his feral body contained. The tree dwellers quietly surrounded him with their very solemn faces. They then kneeled before him. He walked to each, placed his hand on their heads. All the while, he murmured words which I did not understand. Finally, he turned to me and smiled. Then he closed his eyes and walked out the door and off the na na <laughs> and off the narrow path high into uh, high in the trees. I'm going to reread that for the recording. <clears throat> then he closed his eyes and walked out the door and off the narrow path high in the trees. The tree dwellers were silent. They began a procession down the nearest rope ladder. As I was descending, I saw several of them pick up the body he had fallen onto a lower level of the walkway and carry it away. Thank you very much for following me. I guess it was Parley. Yep, Parley. Uh, he was laying at the dead end of a short pier-like structure. With the use of some potion, one of the tree creatures lit the pier on fire and I watched as the flames engulfed him. As this strange funeral proceeded, the waters around the pier changed to dull green. This morning I awoke, finding it hard to even believe the previous evening's events. The water is a dull green for as far as I can see now. For some reason, the water no longer shifts color. As I wander throughout the pathways, the creatures watch me, curious to see what I will do next. They are constantly offering me strange objects of affection. I even found food outside the doorway to the room in, in, in which I had slept. This is a unique race of beings. I hope to learn their language soon so that I may learn more from them. And now the ink colors start changing. Mm -hmm. I had lived on this world for three months off and on. Wow. And the tree dwellers have shown great hospitality. I am even beginning to learn bits of their language. I have decided to return home for an extended stay with my loving wife and sons and hopefully return with them. However, I am sure Catherine will once again refuse. I think this age would be a wonderful experience for them all. And I at least look forward to how Cirrus and Akinar will react to its curious inhabitants. Catherine is, Catherine is staying behind as expected. My sons have returned with me, and they enjoy this age very much. They get along very well with the tree dwellers, and are picking up their language surprisingly fast. I have no doubt that it will not be too long until they can speak with the tree dwellers, tree dwellers much better than myself. I'm leaving tomorrow to check on Osmoyan age. Cirrus has suggested that I allow him and his brother to stay. Though the idea unsettles me, I know the boys are growing up rapidly. The hospitality of these creatures is such that I could think of no better place to leave them alone for a short while, so I will consent to their request. I warn the boys not to take advantage of the respect the tree dwellers have for their ideas. They seem to understand my warning, and I have faith they will follow it. I heard that little giggle there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Much to my dismay, upon arriving in Everdunes, I learned that Pran and her people are continuing to be menaced by the Choctic. Choctic. I fear for their survival and plan on returning to her shortly after checking on Cirrus and Akinar here. See Everdunes Journal for more information. Well, we can't do that now, can we? I would love to, <laughs> to learn more about that. But anyway... After watching Sirius and Akinar, I see they are handling things very well, and I think I can put to rest any fears about leaving them in Channelwood again, and for a little longer time. Wow, the colors keep changing now. The tree dwellers seem slightly distressed that I am leaving, but are happy that Sirius and Akinar are staying behind again. I have been gone for over three days, and have been to many different places. I had to tell Sirius and Akinar about Pran's death today. Aww. And they were visibly shaken, although they only remembered her from their childhood. Catherine has suggested that it would be wise for Cirrus and Akinar to leave Channelwood for a while, and I have to agree, they will be returning with me when I leave again. I've told my sons that they will be returning with me in two days. They spent the entire night telling me of an adventure they experienced in my absence, and it was rather remarkable. 
It seems they constructed a boat with the creatures and traveled some ways out into the surrounding waters. I enjoy hearing them talk excitedly of their adventures and am reminded of my own adventures as a child. <laughs> I finally understand why the tree dwellers have been giving me their many inks and insisting I write with them. Looking through some of my past entries, I see now that the inks have changed from the black I thought they were to, a bit, <laughs> to various different colors. I have shown some of the creatures my journal and they laughed and howled. I did not know they had such a sense of humor. Even now, as I look through this very colorful journal, I cannot help but laugh myself. We will be returning tomorrow, so my sons are with the creatures for the last night here. They have told me they would like to come to Channelwood again, and also asked if they can visit some other ages alone. Though I will have to think over their request, I believe they have proven to me that they are trustworthy and responsible. Definitely. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Catherine will also have to help me decide... The, <clears throat> whether they are ready for travel alone. For now, I must give my farewells to the creatures, for I do not know how long it will be until I visit this age again. And now we got some nice um, map of Chinawood here, some drawings. And that's, uh, that's it, actually. All right. So no clues in this journal about Chinawood, specifically. Uh, but that's okay. We've got the tower rotation. Remember I like that my one. tower rotation. Right. <laughs> it actually kind of, kind of seems like that. Uh, oh, it's nighttime outside. Kind of seems like uh, that would be the um, or late sunset. Sunset, yeah, I yeah. Twilight, as it were. Mm-hmm. Even tide is mm -hmm. another word mm -hmm. for it. For the wordy amongst you. Actually, let me do the tower rotation before I go in there. Otherwise, it would be. Uh, yeah, that nice. would be good. Okay, that's the ship. We don't want that. There we go. It stops at this, which is that huge tree in the forest, the tallest uh, amongst the other trees. Actually, it looks like the video is uh, smoothed out some in the stream. I don't know what happened or what changed. It was Carly. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> you helped to make it all nice and smooth again. No. <laughs> don't take that out of context. Okay, so. Um, yeah, it almost seems like Channelwood would be like the first age that he took his sons to, maybe. Or no, no, it wouldn't be the first. Because they did, did mention uh, that they, they visited Everdoons when they were children. Yeah, I think that's the first one. They left them alone before they were left alone in one. Right. Okay. All right. Let's see if this works up here. Oh yeah, look at that. It's definitely pointing at that tall tree out there. It's not much taller than the others. In the original game, it was like super tall compared to the other I remember games. that. It was quite tall. Like, like ridiculously so. Almost cartoonishly. But anyway. Alright. Well, that's <laughs> fairly simple and easy to remember, I think. Hopefully. So let's go with that. Seven, two, four. Let's go to that tree. Uh, I think I know exactly what those numbers are used for. Do you? Uh, I vaguely. Yes, in the room. To, uh, okay, I'm not going to be good at describing it. I'm sorry. Well, let's go. Come on, let's go through the doorway. Thank you. Let's turn on our flashlight since we have it. Why not? The game gives us one because it's nighttime. So, we come over here. There's the cabin again. Remember all this? There's that. There's the tree itself. 
if we go inside the cabin, there's that. And over here is this safe on the wall. Yep. Yep. And let's see. Oh, it's open. And that's a that, that is what he keeps in his safe, ladies and gentlemen. Box of matches. A box of matches. Missed matches, no less. Quick strike. Okay. Well, we we got a lit match. Okay. <clears throat> Let's take it over here to this. Oh, we've got it lit. The pilot light, I guess. So, um well, let's let's just do this. Let's open up the there, look, look at that. Yeah. Here, 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 here. And you can see the pressure keeps going up and releasing. If we go outside and see what's going on. Yes, tree evader. Tree evader. <laughs> So we're just pushing it up higher and higher. Okay, so obviously, well, maybe not quite so obviously. If we were to get in there as it's going up, well, we kind of almost get stuck, wouldn't we? There's nothing we could do up there, right? So we need to go into it while it's going down. Maybe there's something underneath. So let's turn it off, or at least close to off. Maybe we can make it move slower. Probably don't need it to be that slow. I don't know, but uh, okay, let's get on over here. Get ready to step inside as it keeps going down. I like how they put a light in there and everything. I mean, where did you run the wiring? Did they hollow out the entire tree? Is it battery powered? How how does that work? <laughs> Def definitely like one of those battery powered touch lights yeah that must be what it is otherwise you'd have to haul about the tree alright and sure enough there's this interesting room down here What what are all these uh, trees. I mean, the, these trunks. I mean, where are they going? There's no trees above ground connecting to them. Pretty sure they're right. Anyway. Like, I feel like there's kind of this implication that like Mist Island is built on top of like this whole other area. Like these were trees that used to be topside, and then they just kind of all got chopped maybe, off. Yeah, maybe he cut them down or something up there, but left yeah. these the trunks in here. I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, here we is the channel wood book. The intro was redone again, sped up. It looks like it's, new, but it's, new. it's mostly about the same. I can see some tree houses and such, and there's the single rocky island with. Looks like he built a windmill on it. So we can go there. Alright, it is 10:21. What, what are your feelings right now, Susan? Well, um. I think we want to. Stop it for tonight and pick it up again next time. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Feeling I've got like enough to get really going with get this age. age. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's totally fair. Let me go ahead and save this one. In fact, I'll save it on top of that. So that's fine. That sounds good to me. We can take a quick look around though while we're here. Yeah, yeah. I have most of my memories of this game are actually of this age. Yes, this is a very memorable age, indeed. 
Crease, crease look a lot better in this one than they did. Just it's before. very interesting. It feels much more open to me than it used to. Yeah, I think there was more of a fog or something that mm -hmm. in, in the original. It more felt trees. very closed in. Yeah. I'll have to find some screenshots or something. We'll look those up later. Uh, kind of compare. All right. Well, uh... That's it then for tonight. I think we'll uh, leave it here. Um, if you have been watching live, thank you very much for doing so. Please follow me just like Carly did earlier. If you are uh, so inclined, subscribe if you're able. I don't know if you can right now, but if you can, that'd be awesome. Um, you can also, if you've been watching this on YouTube, follow, like, smash the like button, punch the subscribe, all that like, good stuff. I, I don't know which kids do these days. Um, you can follow me on tw Twitter uh, at StarnB. That's where I make announcements, postponements, cancellations, etc. regarding my streams. And on Instagram, you can find me uh, where I'm simply known as Stern there. I stream every Wednesday evening, just like tonight, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, or 0100 UTC, and on Saturday afternoons at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, or 1800 UTC. Hope to see you all there. Um, we'll see whether or not we'll be continuing this game uh, this coming Saturday, whether or not Susan will be available. If not, uh Probably do a crapshoot or something like that. I don't know. I'll definitely be streaming something, provided my computer, uh, you know, behaves and works with me on that. So, you got anything you'd like to say or plug or whatever, Susan? No. No. All right. Well, then I guess that'll do us for tonight. Um, hope to see you all Saturday, including you, Susan. <laughs> Yeah! Uh, until then, take care and stay safe. Bye!